Welcome to our thought for today, for today, Wednesday the 26th of April. Today we're looking at John chapter 21. In John 21, Peter and Jesus uh, take a walk together on the beach. Much has happened uh, over the recent past and there's a big issue that needs to be addressed. Therefore, what you see here uh, in this passage is forgiveness underlined and a purpose uh, renewed for Peter. Jesus says to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Yes, there's forgiveness here. And yes, there's purpose here. Uh, they've gone back as disciples uh, to what they know. They've gone back to fishing, but that's not what they're supposed to be doing. Within that little phrase at the beginning of the conversation, you have an important lesson for Peter and indeed for us today. Do you love me more than these? In other words, what comes first in our lives? Our love for Jesus means that it follows through uh, that he takes precedence over everything in our lives. Therefore, the gospel and its proclamation needs to come first. Peter needs to recognise that fishing is in his past. And for us too, there are things that need to be put in the past. Things that we enjoyed, things that we did. But that's not our purpose anymore. Our purpose is to proclaim Jesus. For us too, therefore, the easiest thing in the world is to miss out on the opportunities therefore given to us to serve Jesus as his witnesses. We just need to do something else. That's the point. That's the point of what the disciples are doing here. They're doing something else, something less important. Therefore, like Peter, we need to remember that time is short and the time to proclaim Jesus is now. We can do that because we know we're forgiven. We've been completely changed because of the cross at Calvary. Jesus needed to come alongside Peter and assure him that he was indeed forgiven. Given the mess that Peter had made in the courtyard of the high priest, where he had denied Jesus three times. I think that's the reason that you see here uh, Jesus asking Peter this threefold question, do you love me? Then with forgiveness, of course, as I said, there's purpose. He instructs him to feed the sheep. In this, Peter is empowered because he is forgiven at the cross. And he has a purpose in Jesus as, as Jesus directs him. Of course, that purpose is far reaching for Peter as Jesus reveals to him on the beach. In verse 18, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another, another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. The man was transformed and emboldened to speak for Jesus, even unto death. For Jesus, he would indeed be martyred. And in love for Jesus, he didn't shy away from what needed to be said and what needed to be done. The point that Jesus makes on the beach is, we each have a race that is laid before us under the gospel. Verses 20 through 23. When you look at big business today, people climb a ladder and they look at one another and they make aims and plans to catch up with one another, to be where they want to be. They're not content with their life. They look to someone else's life. They want to overtake them. It is a reality that is so different uh, in so many spheres of life. We look at others and we make comparisons. We're all the same in that sense. How else do you think keeping up with the Joneses began? It's called coveting. And so here on the beach, Peter is doing a little bit of that, unsurprisingly. When Jesus tells him he's going to die for the cause, he naturally looks at John and says, well, what about him? If I'm going to die, what about him? Jesus gently rebukes him again. What If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? 
And so he simply says to Peter, you must follow me. We cannot look at one another. We cannot look at another Christian's life longingly. We're all called to do the same thing in effect. To follow the master. To follow Jesus. And therefore we each have our own race to run for the Lord. And all we're called to do in that is to be faithful to him. To the one who is our Lord. No matter what the future holds, remember God is sovereign. And we are saved because of the forgiveness that is available to us under the gospel. A gospel that we're meant to live and to speak. All we are called to do is to follow him, to honour him, and ultimately to be faithful to him where we are, where he has placed us, so that he indeed is honoured and his kingdom is grown. Let's pray. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the reality that we know in him, that as he died and rose again, we are forgiven as we trust in him. Thank you, too, that we have a purpose for him, to live for him and to proclaim him. Help us to do that, Lord. No matter in how small a way it might be, you can take our stumbling and faltering words and multiply them. Lord, do that, please, we pray that your kingdom may indeed be grown, that a people may be reached for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.